Hello and welcome to part one of Spring Creek. I'm George Call, here to uh, invite you, those of you on YouTube and Uscreen. I always put part one of my three-part series on uh, YouTube and uh, hopefully encourage you to come over to Uscreen, which is a paid platform. Today was block in. We started with a white canvas and I figured out where the uh, shapes are and then filled in with value color. Did all that in 30 minutes, I believe. And um, that's how we came up with a foundation of thin colors, thin paint. Didn't pile it on yet. We'll do that tomorrow and the next day. All right, I think enough said. Let's get started with today's painting of Spring Creek. Thanks for coming by. Good morning, everybody. and. Here we are, ready to start another three-part series. Uh, this particular painting is going to be called Spring Creek Ranch. And the reason for that name is because it's on Spring Creek. There's a lot of Spring Creeks in the United States, but this is up in Wyoming, over by Saratoga, Wyoming. So Jenny and I were up there a couple years ago, camping and uh, looking at all this beautiful country. Well, let's get started with uh, equipment. So I've got, it looks like a 10 flat, a 6 flat, a 4 um, filbert, and then another small filbert, looks like a number 2. Those are probably the ones that we're going to be using today. And we're going to start with um, drawing some shapes and figuring out where the shapes are. I'll get into that in just a second. But let's talk about the basics over here with the colors. We want to start with the blue, red, yellow, and uh, my two mixtures, which would be Naples and Cool Gray, and that's what that stuff is over there. I also have a burnt sienna, and I don't have my raw sienna out because I forgot to put it out, and I'm going to do that right now. So here we go there. There's my raw sienna, and of course I have my titanium white in the lower right. Over here on the left, I probably have a cad yellow and uh, maybe a cerulean left over from last week. Hate to waste paint. All right, so I also have my trusty T7 palette knife and I want to make a, a gray. So I'm going to make a blue, burnt sienna, white, a little bit more burnt sienna. And I'm going to start drawing shapes. In this block-in phase, which I call my part ones, I start with making shapes. That might be a little too dark. I'm going to lighten it up just a little. If you make it too dark, then it's kind of hard. You have to cover it up when you're doing lighter colors on top of it. So I think that should be about right. When I look at this, I see that the base where the meadow is, is about one-third the way up. So I'm going to try to make some, and it's sloping, I think, just slightly to the right. So it's somewhere in that area. Then on top of that I have trees kind of more above halfway that big one at least, and then I have some mountains about halfway, but I'm thinking to maybe make the mountains a little higher. Kind of goes up to these mountains here. And a little bit of a saddle, and then some mountains behind. And then I have all these smaller trees kind of underneath. I'll do some breaks here. And then I have structures. I'm going to put a little bit more blue into my mixture. And I'm going to draw where the structures are basically going to be. So there's structure one. And then the other one is another structure down here. And 
That's structure number two. It might be too high. It's supposed to be going downhill, I think. It's competing too much with the house. I want the house to be the major guy, so let me race him out. I just put a little turp on my rag and erased it. And then I think there's another guy over here, just shows a roof, and then another one with another roof, I think in here. And then another white spot in here. So that's my structures. And just to help me determine where things are, I'm going to put some darks underneath. The roofs, here we go. And I didn't really overdo it because I may have to move them, I may have to enlarge them, decrease them. So that was just a really rough, rough way to get into it. Uh, there's also, I think, a neat uh, fence line that uh, comes across here. Somewhere in here. And there's a lot of, looks like sage in here somewhere, intermixed with the, um, the fence. All right, so I think that's where the general shapes might be. I'm going to <clears throat> lighten up my blue color that I have. And what I like about this um, um, reference is there's a nice balance between this dark area here and the lights and the clouds. So there's going to be clouds over here. I need more blue. Blue and white. Blue, white. This time I used a little cerulean. And let's start thinking. See then I can kind of tell what's a cloud and what's a mountain. So these are shapes of clouds. Just give me an idea of where these guys are going to be. So I know this is going to be a cloud up in here. And these are clouds. And that's a very rough idea of where things are going to be. All right, time to change brushes. So I'm going to pick up everything I have here and put it in one pile, see if I can use it later. I don't know. Let's make it dark. So let's do blue, gray, and lemon yellow. Lemon, a little bit of Naples. Gonna darken it up just a little bit with some burnt sienna. Too much. Let's go back to blue. Soften it again with Naples. Perfect. All right, that'll do. Oh, this is the white paper basket. Okay, this time I'm going to get into number 10, flat. Going to add just a little bit of turp to this. Remember in, in part one, I want to try to keep these value colors thin at this stage. So I'm just going to try to put them in with a little bit of turp. And I'm starting with the darkest dark. And I can add the lights over. And too much canvas. 
coming through. So see, I'm trying to make it a little bit more solid here. And I'll took a, make a break right there and run my darks off to the right. I think we have some darks right on the bottom too, so I'll, I think that's a fence or something, so I'll make some darks on the bottom. I think I need to have him that way. All right, let's change over to mountain color. So I'm going to clean my brush. In terp, I'm going to dry it thoroughly with my rag. I'm going to pick up my gray-green, and there isn't a whole lot. I don't think I'll save it. But I'm cleaning my glass thoroughly. Okay, let's make a blue ultra and white. And when we add blue, that's the last color in the spectrum of colors that still shows up as objects go farther back. And let's get back to number 10 again. And let's see if this is too dark or too light. Add a touch of gray to it. Touch of gray. Touch of gray. A little bit of titanium white. See, how do you determine this? I determine it on the canvas, not on my palette. I know you see a meadow back there and so forth. There's more green on the side of the hill. I see it too. But we're just trying to block in right now. I'm trying to cover this canvas with with thin paint. And I think there's a mountain back here too. It's starting to look like a landscape painting. It might be a little too blue, a little too dark. It's competing with my values in front. So let me see if I can work on that right now. I'm adding some more white to the blue mixture. And I'll lighten that up. Here we go. That seems to do a little better job value-wise. And you can see I just kind of run that right into the blue trees. But I have to clean my brush because of the contamination I just picked up. You see this white? I'm trying to get rid of this white stuff that's canvas coming through. And then over in the back is some snow-covered mountains. So they're farther back. There's very little blue in it. It's mostly white, so I'm just going to make a lighter value on that. And I'll put some white on, I think, one of these mountains right here and here. Just lightly trying to do that. <clears throat> Okay, let's move up to the clouds. I've got this mountain color here. I might be able to continue to use it. And I'm going to make just one value for the mountains, one value color. And um, I, I mean for the clouds. And then I will work it more as we go down the road here in part two and part three with the lights and darks in the clouds. But I'm going to uh, basically make a ultra and some red, alizarin, and a lot of white. 
So it makes a very, very light, light, light purple. There's many ways to make clouds, but this is one basic block in color that you can use. So as you can see, and I want to stress, I'm not getting into a lot of detail yet. Now I'm using a great big brush too. You can see from the overhead, I'm really loading up this brush on both sides. And now I'm putting this in, and you can see there's a difference in value and color from the mountains that I put in. Get a little, little bit of turp in there to thin it down just a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit more cloud on this side, even though I don't see it in the reference. And I'll leave a little bit of, I'm going to bring some right down to the mountain here. And I'm continuing to block in my clouds with this mixture. And I'm going to take this guy off the top. All right, that's good. And I'm cleaning my brush thoroughly. Don't have to get every bit of it out because I'm still going to be working in the sky and we're going to make a sky color now. I think I've got some of that purple left over and I'm running out of white already. So let me squeeze some out here. There we go. And what else do I need maybe out here? Probably need some terra verde for the foreground. I'll worry about that in a minute. But let's continue on with the sky. All right, so I'm going to throw some white out here. I still have some contamination surrounding it on my palette, so I'm not exactly being pure of heart here. And I need some viridian for my sky. for not being better prepared. And I'm just going to put a dab a dabble of that out there. And let's add just a little bit of viridian to the mixture and a little bit of cerulean. That's a beautiful color. Viridian and cerulean together is beautiful. I probably picked up a little bit of contamination from the mixture below it. I'm loading up my brush thoroughly on both sides and I'm putting this sky color in now. A little bit more blue. This is the cerulean. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. Add it's a little bit more white here. Uh oh, let's see what's going on with the overhead camera. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting a call from North Carolina, which usually means it's, you know, some sort of spam. Sorry for the beeping. All right, so here I am trying to get in between these clouds here and doing my best. Now what I'm going to do off camera is try to eliminate more of these whites around the clouds like I'm doing now. But for the sake of time because I want to get to the foreground and I want to stay within my 30 minutes. I want to 
fill in all these little white spots a little bit later. Okay, so now let's go to the foreground. I know I've got these uh, interesting shapes. This uh, uh, looks like some sort of sh a sage color thing here. So um, let's just use some of the sky color, adding a little bit of ceruleum to it. Ceruleum is kind of on the blue, uh, the green side of blue, and let's uh, add a little bit of viridian to it and some gray. So the mixture was ceruleum, gray, and viridian. Here it is. Should make that a little lighter. I added more white. And I'm going to bring some of this out to the right like it shows. And some are going over here. It's just a good way to try to fill in these big spaces with interesting shapes. So we have some going off this way to the left. And I'll take it all the way up there. And then I'm taking some across the meadow this way. I'm going to re-emphasize my darks there. I think those are the posts. So it's going to be burnt sienna and blue. Don't try to overdo these darks. And I'll have tilting fence posts. I'll probably forget where those are and cover them up. But I do think they're important to have that in the foreground. All right, I still need to finish the foreground. And, but I want to stand back and see where I'm at right now. And I think there's some good basic stuff going on already. I think so far we're doing pretty good. So let's continue on with making a new green. So let's go into blue and lemon yellow, right on top of this mixture. Why am I mixing with my brush? That's what they got a palette knife for. Just mixing up all these blues and stuff down here. And I have a nice green. Let me see what that looks like. Probably a little too dark. I'm going to lighten that up. I should have lightened that up with Naples, darn it. To warm it up a little. But that ought to be a good start. All right, so that was Ultra Blue, Lemon, Yellow, Naples, and a little bit of white. Cleaning my brush. I got a bunch of paint on my glove. I've got to get that off. And there we go. I think that's a pretty good value. And again, I'm thinning it out with a little bit of turp. And if you do too much turp, it'll make it a little too dark. It kind of have to be just right. I'm famous for making my my brushes that are flats into filberts because I use the side of them so much and scrub with them. And you can see I'm kind of getting a little too close to some of my fence posts and losing them. But I know where they are. I can still see them. And I can come back and get them. I hope we have a few minutes left to work on those structures, the ranch buildings. Got some 
bunch of white canvas over here showing, so I better work on that a little bit. Alrighty, let's get into these. What am I doing on time? I still got a few minutes. Good. As you can see, we've made a lot of progress. And as I said, I'm going to work around these clouds a little bit and get some of the white stuff out of the way. You can actually do it with your thumb or your finger, too. All right. Um, let's get some more definement in these. Structures. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush. This is a looks like a number two filbert. A number two flat would probably be a little better. Let me see if I have one. Oh, somewhere down there I have brushes. Okay. Let me get this green off to one side. And I'm going to make a mixture of Naples, yellow, and white. And I'm going to, I think the strongest roof we have is over here on the right. And I'm going to put that in. Okay. And then I have some more of these blotches of color right here. I'm going to put Naples there. And then there's a green roof. I'm going to make Viridian and white for the green roof that I see next. Viridian and white, so that is right in here. And I'm going to use this same Viridian for a roof down in here. and a sliver of Viridian over on that side. I'm going to use a dark dark, which is a blue, burnt sienna, Viridian, alizarin, alizarin, anything that looks dark on your palette. I just put that here and I'm going to put some of it underneath some of these structures. I'm going to lighten this mixture just a little bit with white. It makes a nice gray. And I'm going to put that in this gray. Where the house is. The range house. Alrighty. Since I have a little bit of this dark stuff still around, I'm going to just strengthen some of these fence posts. And they get more scrunched together as they go back. All right, let me get back and take a look at this and see how it's going. And uh, I'm a little, a little sloppy here, so I'm going to go back and bring the trees down to the structures. So that was blue and yellow. With a little burnt sienna. Oops, lost my image, sorry, hang on. Yes. I added a little gray, and let me get this stuff a little closer to my structures. Since I have this green out, watch what I do when I put Naples in it. it. Lightens it up, and as you can see, there are lighter parts of the tree which we can work on tomorrow. See that just that Naples is good to 
do as the light in the trees. I have a little bit more of that left. I will put it in various places. And what that does is kind of, I can use the blue from the mountain behind and it mixes well and gets rid of my white spots that I might have. You can see I'm bringing some all the way down in some areas. And I need just a little bit more dark left, which I don't have. Let's see if I can make some real quick. And I need some more, I think, under some of these structures. And I'll put some darks in the bottom of Ranch House. See a big hunk of dark on one side. Well, that didn't work very well. Yeah, that's better. All right. I know it looks a little sloppy, but it's a block in. Relax. And I need some dark over carrying it off to the right. I'm going to connect all my structures over here with some darks. And that seems to work pretty good. And there's a whole bunch of dark right over in here. And I'll carry that off to the right. And some real good darks at the base of the ranch house over here. And it really carries into these trees here. And I'll get some of those darks. It's actually a blue burnt sienna gray mixture. And I'll put some up in here too. And in other important places. I might be running over time now, so I better bring it to a close. That's blocking. And I want to thank my uh, Zoom students, Jan and Ann, for being with me here this morning. And if you could hang on after we finish class, we can discuss this. And I'll be working on my sky holes here in the clouds. All right, so that brings us to the end of part one, block in. We started with drawing where our shapes are going to be, then we put in thin, thin value colors. That's all we did. Simple, simple. All right, with that, we'll bring part one to a close of uh, Spring Creek. All right, bye everybody.